Ibn Khaldun was an Arab philosopher and historian who wrote the influential al muqaddima a text covering history, geography, governance, the arts, the sciences, and many such paramount topics. Ibn Khaldun begins his outline by stating the natural condition of human society. The constitution of Bedouin civilization, he says, is essentially clan-based and characterized by savageness. The power of one individual human being cannot withstand the power of any one dumb animal, especially the power of the predatory animals. Consequently, social organization is necessary to the human species. Without it, God's desire to settle the world with human beings and to leave them as his representatives on earth would not materialize. God, in his grace, gives success. When mankind has achieved social organization, and when civilization in the world has thus become a fact, people need someone to exercise a restraining influence and keep them apart, for aggressiveness and injustice are in the animal nature of man. The person who exercises a restraining influence must be one of themselves. He must dominate them and have power and authority over them, so that no one of them will be able to attack another. This is the meaning of royal authority. It has thus become clear that royal authority is a natural quality of man which is absolutely necessary to mankind. The Bedouin tribes of the desert obey a natural leader. Their allegiance is one tied to the sheik. The sheik is one of their number, a part of the family, but also stands alone and atop as its head, since he is courageous and wise or otherwise successful in his deeds. Ibn Khaldun moves on to explain when a man who has attained the rank of a leader on the basis of tribal consciousness sees the way to true lordship opening up before him, he follows this way, for the goal in sight is a desirable one. It can only be reached, however, on the basis of tribal consciousness, for this alone assures him of allegiance. And thus, kingship is the goal to which tribal consciousness ultimately leads. The Mukadima argues that this is because strength is obtained only through Asabiya, a group feeling shared among members of a certain ethnic descent or similar like-minded group. Dynasties of wide power and great royal authority have their constitution in religion, however. When people are turned toward the truth and reject the world and whatever is false, and advance toward God, they become one in their outlook. Only by God's help in establishing his religion do individual desires come together in agreement to press their claims and hearts become united. Bedouins and other nomadic barbarians are prior to sedentary people. The desert is the basis and reservoir of civilizations and cities. When dynasties and ruling families age, they approach senility. This is characterized by their enfeeblement, their increasing hubris, overall decadence, and lust for glory. People continue to adopt ever newer forms of luxury and sedentary culture and of peace, tranquility, and softness in all their conditions, and to sink even deeper into them. They thus become estranged from desert life and desert toughness. Within a given ruling family, leadership exhausts itself after four generations. The originator of the family's fame knows what efforts his work has cost him, and therefore preserves those qualities that were the foundation of his power. The son who inherits his authority has had a personal relationship with his father and has learned from him. The third generation, however, contents itself with an outward imitation of its predecessors and relies on custom. And finally, the fourth generation no longer possesses any proper idea of the effort that went into the creation of the authority. Each dynasty has within itself the seeds of its own downfall. The success of the founding fathers leads to the downfall and decline of their successors. Each ruling family can thus be expected to remain in power for a period of approximately 200 years. After a dynasty has become senile, injustice and weakness characterize it. It is only a matter of time before the dynasty is overcome by the barbarians, and thus the cycle begins anew. Titus Burkhardt writes on this historical text, he says, A Bedouin movement can only create a large state when the demands for supremacy springing from the various tribes are subordinated to a leadership of a higher order, and this can only be prophethood, or a function deriving from it. The epic beginning was destined to repeat itself periodically, 
the beginning, when the disunited desert tribes, mostly nomadic and scarcely noticed by the surrounding civilized cultures, were united by the message of the Quran, became the vehicle of a spiritual mission, and suddenly conquered and transformed the whole Near Eastern world from the Indus to the Pyrenees. As the power of the Arabs became absorbed by the urban cultures, other nomadic peoples like the Turks and Mongols in the east and the Berbers in the west assumed the role of the ethnically and spiritually renewing power that had succeeded in shattering the petrifications of the cities.